you say settlements are not the issue. The Obama administration believes that settlements are a clear issue uh, in, in a way that very few administrations have. Uh, they have made this the early centerpiece of their, of their move, their desire mm -hmm. to re reignite peace talks. Do you think that they are making a mistake? I don't think, I don't, I never said that settlements aren't an issue. And I think, I, I can't speak for the Obama administration, but I think that they understand as well that the settlements are not, not the issue, that it's one of many issues. Another issue is the degree to which the Arab states are willing to embark on a process of normalization with us, and that process is, is, is right now moribund. Um, I think that they're both sides, the Israeli side, the American side, are working earnestly, ardently to try to find a compromise over the question of the degree to which uh, construction can continue in the settlements to accord for what we call normal life. And I think that I'm, I'm fairly confident that in the uh, coming period we will find a solution for this. Do you believe, you've been studying this for 30 years, do you actually believe that, that there is a moment in time in the near future when the Palestinians will recognize Israel as a legitimate Jewish state? I think there is a, a time in the future, but that, is, that, that moment is the, process, is the culmination of a process. It's a process that begins with the schools. It begins with changing textbooks, which denies Israel's legitimacy and, 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 and right to exist. Two weeks ago, I watched uh, public service announcements by the, by the Palestinian Authority, paid for, by the way, with American taxpayers' dollars. And the public service announcement said, you know, welcome to PA Television. We are going to liberate not only Tulkarm and Janiyam, but we're going to liberate Haifa and Jaffa and Tiberias. Now, that is not the way to go. That does not lead to mutual recognition of two, the right of two peoples to their independent states. And that process has to start now. And we, have, we have recognized our obligations under previous agreements. One of those agreements talks for a sequential process in which Israel will find a solution for the settlement issue, but the Palestinians have to begin to end what we call hatred on their television sets and in their textbooks. Without that, you are raising generations to regard Israel as an alien, hostile, temporal state. And that's, um, that is not a prescription piece. Let me uh, ask one more question, and then we're going we're gonna to open it up to questions from the audience. I'm sure there are a lot of questions here. Um, existential threats to Israel. Mm. Uh, Iran, obviously, is at the top of uh, the prime minister's list, top of most Israelis' list. And, and a lot of Arabs' list. And a lot of Arabs' <laughs> list as well. Uh, go through those existential threats very quickly, if you could, and uh, your view of those existential threats. And... Uh, talk about the current moment in Iran. And the specific question on that is, do you agree with the Obama administration's approach to the current crisis in Iran? Israel has supported the Obama administration's uh, program of outreach and engagement with Iran. Um, we believe that the president has America's best interests at heart. It believes he has the interests of the region at heart. We are concerned. We are concerned about the timing and the timeline of this engagement. There are clocks ticking all around. One of those clocks is the uranium enrichment clock, which will show that it is by a certain date, the Iranians will have uh, sufficient uh, highly enriched uranium materials to create a bomb that could literally wipe Israel off the map in a matter of seconds, that they could, they could uh, accomplish uh, in a matter of seconds uh, what they deny Hitler did and kill six million Jews, literally. Uh, we have that clock. We are anxious that Iran also, in the course of its engagement, shows a change of policy in the region. It ceases its, its, uh, its support of terrorist groups like Hezbollah and Hamas that are also trying to wipe Israel off the map. Um, and now we are particularly concerned, in, and not just I think the American administration is concerned as well, in light of recent events in Iran. Everyone's waiting, everyone's seeing what's going to come out of this uh, situation in Iran. But while we're waiting, while we're watching, the clocks are still ticking. Do you believe that and President Iran. Obama was strong enough in his support, moral support for the Iranian people? Not do you think there's more that America could do? I'm not going to second guess President Obama's positions on, on Iran. Um, I think his last statement was very clear, very adamant uh, in his condemnation of the uh, regime's suppression of peaceful demonstrators in Tehran and other, other cities. Um, I think it's um, very important, again, that we watch carefully what happens in Iran. On one degree, on one level, the events in Iran have unmasked 
to the world, to anybody who ever doubted the true nature of this regime. This is a regime that's willing to kill its own citizens. It will certainly have no compunctions about killing other people in the regions, Jews and Sunni Arabs alike. Um, on the other hand, we have to watch and see whether there is a breakdown of rule in Iran, whether a supposedly moderate leadership emerges, which would be welcomed, but if that moderate regime does not moderate Iranian behavior, it would further complicate our situation. Uh, let's go, let's, uh, if you want to line up, there's two mics, I think, one here and one, and one there. Uh, and as you're lining up, just talk for one more second about the other threats that you've outlined in your writing. My other threats? Why, well, just before, before I got nominated for this position, when I could still write as a private citizen, I wrote a, an article called The Seven Existential Threats Facing Israel. Um, and they were threats, some of them are pretty accessible to um, a general reader. Some of them require a certain amount of expertise on the internal Israeli political situation, but they were Iran. They were terror. Terror today posed an existential threat to Israel. It's not merely a nuisance that it was, say, in the 60s and the 70s. We found that terrorists with missiles can uh, literally eliminate normal life in Israel. Suicide bombers can, um, could, could, can uh, impact the economy, can kill our economy. Um, but there were some interesting existential threats, one of which I call the, um, the breakdown, the hemorrhaging of Israeli sovereignty, which was Israel's um, failure to date to extend its sovereign laws uh, over parts of, of its population and parts of its area. Just to give you a more recent example that I can talk about, we have unauthorized settlements on the West Bank. In addition to the, to the, the settlement issue, there's, a, there's an issue of a number of settlements that were not authorized by the Israeli government. Usually young people went up on a hillside and stuck a couple of trailers up there. And this is in violation of Israeli law. We also have a lot of illegal building in Israel. We have illegal building, say, by some Arabs in East Jerusalem. Israel is going to address both of these issues, both the unauthorized settlements and the illegal building within the context of Israeli law. There'll be no more hemorrhaging of Israeli law. And I believe that will address an existential threat to the Jewish state. Um, it wouldn't be the Aspen Ideas Festival if Jim Woolsey weren't at the mic. I